Well, friends, welcome back to the bee yard. As many of you guessed, we gave you a lot of hints. The bees are back. New bees, but they are bees and they are back. We have successfully made the transition from a local beekeeper who lives about 10 miles north of me. I sent him a couple messages. Hey, save me some nukes, save me some nukes, save me two. He's got two beautiful nukes here for me. He actually provides them in these nice wooden boxes as well, which is really cool. So I got their new hives. Well, old hives set up in a new location, all cleaned up. If you look around, yeah, I can't twist you around, but if you followed our beekeeping adventures before, things probably look a little bit different because they are. I have moved my bee yard to a new location. Um, I used to be back, straight back that way, about 100 feet, 75 feet or so. And I moved them up here closer, closer to the house. The turkey pen is right here, right behind the camera. The pig pen is right to my right. So we're in a lot closer proximity to the rest of our stuff, but it's way drier up here. That back there gets really swampy. I get standing water. Both Rachel and me have always been concerned about it. It was her idea. Hey, let's move them. Let's get them somewhere where it's more dry. So we're gonna try it this year and see if it helps. They're being a little feisty. It was hot here today in Michigan. We got up to like 86 or I, I don't know. It was hot. So I've been waiting all day. I went and picked these up last night around nine o'clock. We got home, it was dark. I kind of set them in place. I pulled the screen off the front. So they've had all day today to free range and kind of get used to their new surroundings. And if you, uh, you know what? I'm gonna start losing light here. So I need to keep working and I'll try to talk to you guys as I work. It doesn't always go the greatest when I try to do that. I'm kind of, I guess, uh, not the most coordinated when it comes to speaking and doing something at the same time. But we're gonna give it a shot because otherwise I'm gonna be doing this in the dark and I'm gonna have to go get flashlights and then I can't take you guys with me. So I am excited and I'm happy. And a lot of the reason that that bees are here back on our homestead is because of you guys and the comments you shared in the video where I talked about losing all five of my colonies last winter. So I'll touch on some of that here as we move along. I uh, think, 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 think. I got everything ready. It's kind of weird when I was like moving to the moving these hives the other night is like everything that I have for beekeeping is all back there in the woods. I had to move everything. There's still a lot of stuff I haven't moved, but I brought my box with me and my smoker tonight and I'll slowly get everything moved over. Full suited tonight, gloves and all. That's a lot of brood on there. I don't know these bees. So for basically just meeting for the first time, I don't know their temperament. So it's best to protect yourself. Wear all the safety gear, they make it for a reason. I'm putting all these frames back into the new box in the same orientation as they were before. These girls have been in here for a while, I think. They got a lot of food packed away. This whole frame, both sides, is all nectar. So that went good. 
I'm gonna leave the box and the lid here overnight. These girls will find their way. They'll smell their queen from in here and make their way in. And I'm gonna leave these girls be for at least a week. I'm not gonna mess with them. Let's just let them get adapted, learn their way around. I posted a picture the other day on uh, Facebook of all this crimson clover that we have um, out in the back of our property. We planted a deer, we put in a deer plot last year. Uh oh. <laughs> our turkeys are free ranging now in the pen where the goats were and the goats have moved over to the pig pen and one of them just looked like he was on a runway getting ready to take off and fly. <laughs> Huh. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But anyways, uh, deer plot. We put in a deer plot in our back pasture last year, turnips, clover, all these different things. This spring, all the crimson clover has sprouted up out of the ground and it's the absolute most beautiful thing. We don't normally have crimson clover here in Michigan, so it's such a blessing to have. I'm leaving it. I went back there today covered in bees. <laughs> There's a lot of bees in there already. I had a couple frames of honey in there. I think they're going in and stealing it. It's fine by me. I changed your guys' position so you can see. It's back here now where the turkeys are, so maybe they'll cruise over here. I'm hoping the turkeys don't get stung. I told you I would talk a little bit about some of the comments. There's so many, so many encouraging comments from you guys. Just to, to don't give up, you know. All beekeepers every now and then have failures. Some big, some small. In fact, I was talking to my mom the other day. She knows another guy who lives in the next town over. Been beekeeping for 30 years. Went into winter here in Michigan. 15 colonies, they all died. There was a comment somebody made and they said something to the effect that if you're a beekeeper and you have, you have the knowledge and the tools necessary to be a beekeeper, you almost have you almost have a responsibility almost like a social responsibility to the human race to be a beekeeper because bees are so so threatened right now by so many factors in fact i have a, i have a new story that i want to tell you guys sometimes about my a person who lives relatively close to us we just had their house sprayed the other day with poison so that bees and wasps and other insects wouldn't build nests. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll have to tell you that story mm -hmm. sometime, but mm -hmm. that's a lot of the reason, I guess, why, why I got bees again is that I kind of feel responsible. Like, I feel like I have the equipment, I have the tools, and I really hope I have the knowledge to be a successful beekeeper. Therefore, it's kind of my responsibility to do so. There's also the fact, something I touched on in the, in the last bee video, or maybe it was the one before that, that I just, I really like having bees. It feels to me like in our environment, in our ecosystem that is our homestead. There's supposed to be bees here. And we've been seeing a couple here and there, but nothing like it was when we had bees. In fact, the very first year we moved in, we never saw a single bee, ever. You could walk through our seven acres of pasture back here, six acres or whatever you want to call it, 
completely covered in dandelions, and you could walk through there barefoot and never see a single bee. That was the moment that I realized we need to be become beekeepers. So I think the very next year I bought my equipment, I bought my first set of bees, and ever since it's just grown and grown and grown. So, so I'm gonna get these girls closed up. I think I'm gonna shake a lot of these ones because there is still a lot of bees in here. Kind of like buying a package of bees. Yeah, that was a lot. Much better. That angered him. Come on. They decided to come next door into the pen with the turkeys. Hey, come on over and say hi. Come say hi to my friends. Come here. These, they've been so cute and so fun lately. Hi. And like if they see you walking by the fence, they will all come running over to you like you got a pocket full of candy or something. It's crazy. Super cute. But the bees are just 50 feet that way on the other side of that fence. Figured I'd get away from the bees. That way I could take my veil off and... um. Thank you guys again, personally, in a manner that you can see my face um, for all your encouragement and your wisdom and your ideas and your thoughts. Um, it really helped me because I was I was really just going to take the year off, I think. I don't think I'm ready to throw in the towel completely. Um, it's just more of a, you know what, maybe I'll just take this year off and recoup. But, I don't know, you guys just, you guys made me feel feel good about myself, like, I'm not the only one. There was so many comments from so many people. I lost X number of hives. I lost seven, I lost 10, I lost... It's, it can be kind of normal, especially when you live in the North like we do here. Um, so thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for all the kind words, encouragement, and uh, I'm gonna do a good job with the bees this year. I got some different plans on how I'm going to take care of them and treat them, but we're going to uh, cover all that in some later videos, but that felt good. I was, I was excited. I was happy to, uh, there's a certain smell, a certain smell that you get when you crack the lid off of a hive, a healthy hive, a colony of bees. It's a certain smell that comes and it just, it's like, like that euphoric feeling. It just, like, and I think it's the only place you can smell that smell. <laughs> it's unique, and if you're a beekeeper, you know you know what I'm talking about. Those hives that are good, they're healthy. You crack that lid, and it's like, yeah. Now this is what a bee colony is supposed to smell like. You, you've opened some other ones too, and you know when <laughs> you know when something's wrong too. When they don't smell right. So, thank you guys for today. Thank you for the encouragement. We'll see you soon. Thank you.